Hello everyone, it's me, Deadlead, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of the most sensationalized space technologies that exists, the Ion Drive. Ion Drives, or Ion Engines, are an advanced form of space propulsion that utilizes ionized particles and an electric field to accelerate spacecrafts. The specifics of how an ion engine works is pretty complicated, unsurprisingly, but the basic principle on how it works is fairly easy to understand. A stream of gases, usually a noble gas like xenon, is released into what's called an ionization chamber. There they are bombarded by a stream of electrons which strip the other electrons off of the gases and ionize them, making them a positively charged particle and this kinetic energy of the electrons bouncing into them pushes them towards the back of the ionization chamber. At the back of the ionization chamber, there are two grids with a very high voltage across them. The positive grid pushes the positive xenon ions towards the back of the engine, while the negative grid pulls them towards the back of the engine and out to the exhaust. The same way that magnets push and pull each other based on their polarity. Now once they're past the negative grid, a second beam of electrons is shot into the exhaust neutralizing the xenon atoms before they have a chance to turn around and become re-attracted back to that negative grid. This creates a stream of ionized plasma which generates thrust and accelerates our craft. All rocket engines, whether ion engines or chemical rockets, work on the conservation of momentum. The initial mass of a rocket and its fuel times the initial velocity of the rocket is equal to the final mass of the rocket times the velocity plus the final mass of the spent fuel times the exhaust velocity. Now, let's say that our rocket is not initially moving, as most are, so our initial velocity is zero. That means the entire left-hand side of this equation becomes zero. So, we can set the final velocity times the mass of our rocket, or its final momentum, equal to the velocity and mass of our exhaust, or the exhaust's momentum. Now, without changing the amount of fuel we have to work with or making our rocket smaller and less heavy, the only way that we can make our rocket go faster using this equation is to increase the velocity of our exhaust. And this is exactly what the ion drive attempts to do. It accelerates the gases so much faster than a normal rocket could possibly do, but this comes at the cost of total thrust. Sure, the ion engine can accelerate these particles to crazy high velocities, but it can only accelerate a few atoms at a time. As we know now, force is equal to mass times acceleration, and if the mass of fuel being burned per second is minuscule, then the thrust, the force that our engines are creating, is also going to be minuscule. Ion engines are cripplingly underpowered. Seriously, it takes hours and hours of sustained burning to accelerate any ion-powered craft to even a meter per second. So are ion engines really worth it? And that's what we're going to find out today. Can we get an ion-powered spacecraft to another planet or moon in Simple Rockets 2, and how hard is it to do? So this ion engine-powered satellite only weighs 920 kilograms, and we're going to fly it to Brigo, the closest moon to Drew, and park it in a stable, close orbit. Now, I'm not using any mods on this probe, and it has no Tinker or XML edited parts. It is an entirely vanilla craft with no cheats, so you can see exactly how an ion engine works, and anyone can try this, whether you're on mobile or PC. So the way we're going to do this is by conducting a large number of burns once per orbit around Drew. Each one is going to raise our apoapsis of our orbit slightly. Then, once we get our apoapsis up to the orbit of Brigo, which is going to take a long time, we're going to start raising our periapsis to that same altitude. This is actually going to look more like a rendezvous with a satellite than your standard home and transfer orbit that we would normally do to get to a planet. And the reason is we just don't have the thrust to kill all of our relative velocity and get captured by Brigo. So we have to try and match speeds with it first by slowly raising our orbit to meet it. Now, as you can see, this took a long time, and I mean a long time. I probably sat here for 20 minutes making these maneuvers, and this is at 500 to 2500 times the normal speed in game. What you're watching now is an even more accelerated 10 times speed of what I did, with some sections completely edited out for time's sake. But finally, we got our apoapsis high enough to encounter Brigo, and you may have noticed that I didn't have to pause and wait for my batteries to recharge as my orbit became more eccentric. Now, that's because when I was in low Drew orbit, I spent roughly the same amount of time in Eclipse, being shaded by Drew, as I did being exposed to the sun and able to recharge my batteries through my solar panels. 
but once I got into this highly eccentric orbit, I had a lot more time to charge my batteries during this long path around Drew, and then only a short period of time where I was actually covered behind Drew. And now, finally, you see that I have an encounter with Brigo, and my velocity is so close to it that I'm almost all the way captured already. So we can make one more final burn at my Brigo periapsis, the closest point in my approach to Brigo, and that will get us captured into orbit around it. Now, all we have to do is the same process in reverse, burning at periapsis to lower my apoapsis this time. Now, as you can see, the ion engines are incredibly efficient. All that time that I was burning, I only used 20% of my fuel, and I didn't bring very much fuel on this probe, only a couple kilograms in the first place. So ion engines are incredibly powerful tools, but you need to be very patient for them to be worth using. The real power of ion engines is if you need a highly precise orbital maneuvering system, or if you need to make subtle changes to a craft's orbit in a process called station keeping. Sometimes, small enough spacecraft or tiny probes can use the efficiency of ion engines and their low mass to actually accelerate them to other planets, but no, you cannot unfortunately use ion engines to take large payloads to other planets or stars. It just wouldn't be practical. I hope this video helped deepen your understanding of an interesting topic in space exploration. If you liked it, you'll probably like the video I did breaking down how nuclear rockets work as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. Your viewership and support is what keeps these videos coming. Until next time, take care and keep on building.